Let's hop on 10 bullet trains over the course of 6 days, and I'll show you everything I ate. Near the end of the trip, we had over 6 hours of travel where the train goes below the ocean and pops back up in Hokkaido. The first 2 days are very short, and they're with my family, and then for 4 days, Lisa Wen and I will hop through multiple cities starting south in Fukuoka and ending in North Japan at Sapporo. Okay, let's go! Before we hop on each train, we gotta load up on food. My family and I split up in Tokyo Station to find what we were gonna eat in this bullet train ride, which is gonna be over 2 hours long. In Japanese train stations, they'll typically have a bunch of bento shops where you can get a nice set meal for your travels. So for Doug, he's collecting these bullet train bentos, and he bought the same train model that we're currently riding in. There's also some cute character bentos like Kirby or Hello Kitty if you're into that. The only downside is, the food is for young kids, and they're neither filling nor tasty. Plus, the food is automatically going to be cold, so you're just hoping that the flavor is good. The ketchup rice is very mild, the meats are meh, and the tamago yaki is too sweet. I'm gonna end up just having to share my bento with him. My brother Lance went for a meat assortment bento. It came with a pork patty, thin marinated beef, chicken, and a variety of marinated veggies. You got lotus root, burdock root, pickled radish, and more. I didn't try it, but my brother said that he liked it. I went for a scallop bento box. Hey, <laughs> it's a double decker. I thought I'd be getting more scallop, but the rest was pretty good. I wish I knew the black beans were gonna be dessert though, cause it caught me off guard. I love beans for dessert, but this one is sitting right next to my fried chicken and I was expecting savory. Also, the rice that they use for these bento boxes are really tasty, and I think they're seasoned just a little bit for that extra oomph. oomph, oomph. Funny enough, I bought this bento because of the scallop, but there's one piece, and I thought it was the least flavorful thing out of everything I had in here. My brother is a tall guy, so he packed a lot of food. Also, you didn't see him eat the two onigiri in the train station before this bullet train ride. He's really excited to be in Japan, so he's trying as much food as he can. He enjoyed both the katsu sando and strawberry whipped cream sando, but also decided to share with the family. There was one thing my family didn't expect on this trip though. Snow. Ha! It's snowing! A couple of days later, we're heading to Osaka. This one is gonna be very short, but I still wanted to get something for you. In general, bullet trains will stop at a station for only about 30 seconds to a minute. When I got this coffee, my train was arriving in less than 2 minutes. I regret not seeing the warning sign earlier that said it might take 90 seconds. Oh my god, hurry up. My train is leaving in like a minute. <laughs> when you hear that beeping noise, that means that the train is coming. It's here. Great, thanks. It's okay, I'm flustered, but I made it just in time. <laughs> Silly me thought that the coffee would just instantly dispense. But this makes sense because the coffee's not bad. The one that I chose had just a bit of milk and sugar in it. It wasn't too sweet, it didn't taste burnt, and it wasn't watered down. I'm kind of impressed. For a vending machine coffee, this is pretty good. It still was not worth missing my train though. Today, my family is flying home. 
I'm traveling south to start my bullet train hopping journey with Lisa. This one is a longer ride and I didn't eat much for breakfast, so I'm going for a nice bento lunch. Okay, I always have such a hard time picking because there are so many different types. Do I go for seafood, meat, sushi, something deep fried? Today I'm going for an eel box, so I hope it's good. Also, I love how Japan has hot teas in the vending machines and shops everywhere. It serves as a hand warmer and helps my body warm up in the freezing weather. Lisa's coming in from Tokyo and she's switching trains at Kobe Station. She's just hopping in a few cars away from me. We're both sitting by the window seat, trapped next to a stranger, so we'll just see each other in Fukuoka. Time to eat my eel set. In general, eel I've had is plump and has that sweet and salty eel sauce. This one is thin and a bit dry and not enough sauce for my liking. The slab of fish is also strangely chewy and I was not a fan. This is probably one of my least favorite bullet train bentos between this year's and last year's. I ended up being too full to eat the strawberries, so I'll just have them later in the hotel room with Lisa. Now we're in the city of Fukuoka, which is the birthplace of tonkotsu ramen, also known as Hakata ramen. They're also known for yatai, which are very small food stalls scattered throughout the city. Everything we ate here was incredible. It totally made up for that bad bento earlier. Yes, me and Lisa had ramen for breakfast. And it's not the only one we'll have today. Ramen for breakfast, how are you feeling? I'm ready. <laughs> Since I'm so full from the ramen this morning and my body needs a little break, I'm just getting something small for our bullet train ride to Hiroshima. I found this ice chest with what seemed like mandarin oranges. It must be special, so let's try it. This bullet train ride is pretty short too, and I don't want to be too full once we get there. I didn't really know what to expect from these. I knew they'd be cold, but not frozen. I've never seen fruits packaged like this. They're peeled and they're icy. These must be really sweet or something. No, it tastes like a sour mandarin orange. I mean, texture wise, I guess it's cool that the pulp gets crunchy on the outside and bursting with juice on the inside, but it's nothing crazy. <laughs> We're in Hiroshima trying another type of ramen called chuka soba, which means Chinese curly noodles. It's a blend of tonkotsu broth and shoyu broth. After that, Lisa and I spent about 20 to 30 minutes looking for cheese filled momiji, which I tried last year and I love them. The bullet train between Hiroshima to Kobe is also fairly short, so we're just doing a light snack. Momiji are these little cakes that are shaped like maple leaves and they're typically filled with sweetened red bean. Lisa also got a chocolate chip momiji to see what all the fuss is about, but they can also come in a variety of fillings. They're very light and spongy and go really well with coffee or tea. I love the cheese filling because you get that sweet and salty contrast. The problem is, I think I got the wrong one. The cheese filling was actually soft and kind of had the texture of laughing cow cheese if you've ever had it. But the cheese filled momiji I had last year was way better because the cheese was saltier, but these are good enough, they scratch the itch. Lisa and I end our day in Kobe so we can try some Kobe beef. And guess what? We also had ramen here, which you should expect if you were the ramen queen. Lisa and I had no time for breakfast before we left for Nagoya. In the train station, I went to 7-Eleven to grab the corn mayo bread since Lisa said she wanted to try it. She also grabbed a set of mini steamed buns from a nearby shop for us to split.
steamed buns are called butaman here, and we didn't really expect them to be that amazing. These are actually so, so good. The buns are fluffy and has a hint of sweetness, and their fillings are super juicy. The kimchi one was a bit spicy, but not too bad. The barbecue pork one had chunks of fat in it and had a good balance between sweet and savory. And the uncle, the red bean paste was so smooth. The 7-Eleven corn mayo bread though, I was kind of wary about. <laughs> the bread is soaking in oil, it's all over my hands. The flavor of the corn and mayo combo is delicious. It's the sweetness of the corn offset by the creaminess and saltiness of the mayo. The bread is fluffy, but honestly, this was just too oily to be enjoyable. And of course, gotta have some kind of fruit for my body after eating all of that. We only have about four hours in Nagoya, so Lisa and I tried a local dish called miso katsu. The miso adds this sweet and salty sauce over the pork katsu that's just so delectable. And I'm a fan of the slightly fermented taste from the miso. Okay, we have to grab some food now because we won't have a chance to in our next transfer. We're headed to Sendai, which is about three and a half hours total with a transfer in Tokyo. But this next transfer is kind of tricky. We'll only have eight minutes to find a platform before the train leaves. But we can worry about that later. For now, let's talk about the snacks. Nagoya is known for ogura toast. It's anko, or sweetened red bean, slathered on toast with a pat of salty butter on top. It's a common breakfast to have, but we didn't have time to try it. So I just bought these cookies that showed ogura toast on the package. It's not what I expected. You get a floral kind of taste with a red bean paste, and the rest is a chewy cookie with white and chocolate chips. It's better than I thought it would be. Again, goes pretty well with strong tea or coffee. Lisa got this floppy waffle thing. It looked good, but we both didn't like it. The waffle had this savoriness to it, and the texture was kind of spongy and rubbery. I'm sure other people enjoy it, but it's just not what I expected. All right, I grabbed this package thinking I was in for like a pub mix of some sort. No, these are four separate snacks. I guess this is more of like a Japanese Lunchables. I tried the first one and tasted cheese, like a more firm brie cheese with good saltiness. The meat stick was sweet, which I kind of expected. It reminded me of Filipino longanisa and I'm a fan. Okay, this thing was so hard to open. I thought I had to peel the red tape, but it didn't work, so I just kind of bit it until it snapped open. Is that how I was supposed to open it? Still had no idea what this was until I tasted it. It's definitely a fish cake and it has little melty cheese pockets in it with a texture that's softer than a beef stick. I know it looks strange, but it's actually very tasty. I was happy to see these rice crackers and peanuts because I know they're good. These look and taste exactly like the 7-Eleven ones. I'm kind of happy this didn't turn out to be pub mix because what I got is way better. Okay, we have eight minutes to find our platform. Lisa and I were running through Tokyo Station, which is massive, and eventually found the platform, but the train isn't there. We're freaking out, thinking we missed it, but after I chased down a conductor, he told us it was 20 minutes delayed. This was the one thing I was worried about the whole trip. We're chilling. My friends, I am so excited to go to Sendai because I get to reunite with some of my favorite dishes in this city. So Lisa and I are just gonna split some of the breads and snacks that she brought and the eel bento box that I got. The matcha custard in this bread had strong matcha flavor, which I'm a fan of. And the eel bento box. You'd think I'd learned my lesson a few days ago, but I just wanted to give it another shot. For some reason, I have faith that this one's gonna taste a lot better than the other one I had. And good news, it does. Now this is the eel I was talking about, where it's a lot more plump, it's thick, it's tender, and there's a lot more of that eel sauce that I love. The pickles are nice and sweet too. I'm glad that me and Lisa split this because if I ate this whole thing, I don't think I would have space for dinner. Also, I've never had salad flavored pretz before. Weirdly enough, it was actually pretty good. Imagine in the US if you tried to sell a salad flavored chip, like how well would that do? From all the bullet trains I took last year, I never saw one of these food carts. Where did this come from? Anything off the trolley, dears? We'll take the lot. Or just a highball and beef tongue jerky. The beef tongue jerky was kind of strange. The flavor was good. It tasted like teriyaki beef jerky. But the texture, it was soft at first, then it kind of mushes up in my mouth. No matter. We'll get to eat legit beef tongue in Sendai called gyutan, which comes in this epic set and lots and lots of zunda mochi. 
Zunda, Kiko Fuku. Hello there. Good morning, everyone. Today is the longest stretch of bullet train that we're gonna ride. Total travel time is six hours and 30 minutes, not including transfer. I got this one and I got mixed. I asked Lisa, is it crazy if I eat another guillotin set for lunch? She said I have to get it because I just won't stop talking about it. I just wanna... Yeah. We're bulking up on our food because we basically have to grab breakfast and lunch as well as snacks in between because I eat hobbit style. I'm definitely buying a bunch of Zunda mochi before I leave because I don't know when I'll get to eat my next one. You didn't see us last night. We ate so much mochi from all these different shops. drinking Fiba Mini to stay regular, it's actually helping. And it tastes like sparkling cider, which is a plus. Out of all the guillotin shops in the station that I showed you earlier, this was the one that offered takeout. I hope it's as good as last night's guillotin set. I got half of the beef tongue with spicy miso seasoning and the other half just regular. The spicy miso one is stringy and tough. I was so sad. But I guess looking at the regular beef tongue, it's so obviously more plump and juicy. Thankfully, because I thought I was just gonna have to suffer through the spicy miso one. At least they don't both suck. The sides are all pretty decent for a takeout meal. The cabbage was very juicy and crunchy, and the barley rice had great texture. Don't mind me, I just swallowed a glob of the tough spicy miso beef tongue. They like to serve gyutan with either a scoop of wasabi, or a side of pickled vegetables that are very spicy, or both. This one just had pickled spicy peppers, but they set my mouth on fire. Oxtail soup was flavorful and decent. Meat wasn't as tender as last night's, but for a takeaway meal, this really hit the spot. Ooh, look outside. Can you tell we're headed north? Lisa bought some cool shaped breads that actually taste pretty freaking good. It's kind of inspiring me to start my 30 days of bread again. Should I? The main island of Japan that we're coming from is separated from Hokkaido by the ocean which means we're going underwater. All I could think of is a tunnel breaking and filling with water and I don't know why my brain goes there, but we're fine. See, we're fine. We're at the station waiting for our next train and it looks cold, yeah? With the wind blowing, this place is 10 times colder than you think it is. I'm so cold. This next train is not a bullet train, but it's still okay to eat in because it's long distance. Sadly, Lisa and I couldn't book seats next to each other, so I have to sit next to a stranger. Thankfully, he fell asleep right when I was craving my mochi snacks. So if you see one of these tray tables, generally that means that it's okay to eat on this train. The shorter distance trains in Japan though, it's kind of frowned upon to eat in, so I wouldn't do this series there. This train is tricky though because I'm trying so hard not to make a mess with the warabi mochi powder, but the train is so shaky. I miss eating on the Shinkansen, it was so smooth. Warabi mochi, if you've never tried it, is a more jelly-like, translucent version of the mochi you're familiar with. It's typically dusted with kinako, which is roasted soybean flour, and served with a kuromitsu syrup. The one I got also has matcha powder, and sometimes you can get other flavors. Ugh, these mochi desserts are so good. This zunda dango and warabi mochi are definitely in my top favorite Japanese desserts. I'm gonna miss them so much when I get home. Well, my friends, our bullet train journey is coming to an end. Thanks for riding along with me. If you haven't seen last year's bullet train video, make sure to check it out. And this wouldn't be possible without Doug for helping me plan out my route and getting the JR passes. Special thanks to Lisa for riding this out with me. You know she could have flown straight to Sapporo, but decided to accompany me during these crazy few days. If you like this series enough, I can go back again and do it next year. That is, if enough of you hit that subscribe button and like the video. Until then, we can still eat together in Japan or in my kitchen through my other videos. I'll see you there. Bye!